me what would be some indications to them that they may have possibly injured their ACL? I think that's a good question. And, uh, you know, you get some of these randomly people ask you, you know, my knee hurts, should I go in? Those type of things. So this is a good question that I get from patients. Um, I would say the biggest thing is swelling, uh, especially for an ACL tear. If we're going to talk more about those today. Uh, around if you're skiing, you feel a pop or a twist or something like that, and your knee swells, the data shows around 70% of those are ACL tears, still proven otherwise. So it's pretty important if it's got that much swelling, you should come see somebody because initially when you tear your ACL, um, it bleeds and the bleeding can swell up your knee. And so you might not feel unstable, um, but you'll feel that swelling sensation. So you should probably have someone take a look at that, especially if you're a younger, more athletic patient, because that's probably the first time you'll experience that swelling. Um, the next thing I'd say is if you feel unstable, you know, if you, and, and that's a hard word to describe because everybody thinks about it differently. And until you feel it, you don't really know what I'm talking about. But once you have that injury, and if you're sort of stepping or walking, you feel like your knee's going to shift out of place, or it doesn't feel like you trust it at all, and you're an active, an active, healthy athlete, that's when it's time to have someone take a look at it. And I think that it comes from two days. I mean, you should go to Union PT first. I mean, I always send people to PT after an injury. So even if it's something that doesn't require an orthopedic surgeon or surgery, you can go to the PT right away. And that actually ends up being a really good source that sometimes they can tell you, you know, is this the right thing to do? Should I wait on it? And uh, if there's a problem, then they'll send them to me. But either way, we're happy to see you. But the PT is really important. Yeah. How important is that pop, you know, that people will describe or maybe they felt it, maybe they didn't. How, how strongly does that correlate to injury? It's pretty strong if you feel the pop. But I would tell you that in my practice, I mean, just ski injuries I've had in the last three weeks, it's not as common as we think. I mean, I would say initially, you know, first started seeing patients, we thought maybe you'd see it like 80% of the time. And I was asking, did you feel a pop? Uh, it's probably 50, 50, maybe a little less. And I don't, there's not a lot of good data on that pop per se, uh, but I would say that's sort of the people that feel it. If you feel that pop, that's generally the ACL. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, we're going to go into this, uh, but you know, I don't give any real, I try not to overdo the information with patients when they first see me until I have more stuff uh, to evaluate because you don't want, you also don't want to add worry when it ends up being not as big a deal as we thought. So, but a pop is concerning and swelling is very concerning. And those are the two first things someone will have. And usually it's skiing or some high pivoting exercise. Got it. And it, the swelling comes on pretty quick. Right. It's usually, it, yeah, usually it's within a day. Mm -hmm. You know, when someone says it started swelling five days afterwards, I don't really get con as much concern because remember it's a tear and then it, the ACL bleeds because it has a blood supply. And so that bleed, it's not a very big space. So it fills up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so usually within 24 hours, the biggest sign to me, and I ask this question of literally everybody that comes in with skiing injuries is were you able to ski down the hill? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, they were able to, they could not finish the ski run. The only, I remember a few guys have had it. One was a professional, like he was a, he was, did all this the teaching for skiing. He skied down with one leg, Yeah, but that's pretty unusual. Got it. Yeah, that's, that's a great thing to throw out there, right? Uh, easy question to ask patients, easy to ask yourself. Um, and so the extent of the injury, is that going to correlate to the extent of the swelling? So if somebody has like a partial tear versus a complete, does that kind of, is there any guidance on that? There is some, I would say it's not well correlated. I mean, I saw four partial tears in the last three weeks mm -hmm. and two of them, three of them had really bad knees that I thought had a full tear. Mm -hmm. uh, and so even with my ability to do the diagnostic stuff and everything else, you know, we still can't fully pick up on a full or a partial tear initially with that first injury because they're pretty stiff as well. Um, so they do get some tearing, but also depends on the amount of tearing, you know, it's just like a piece of paper, right? If you, you have a partial tear of it, but you just tear a little bit of the piece versus you have a partial tear and it's almost all the way full, that's still considered a partial tear, Sure. right? Uh, so the the answer is if you damage the blood supply, and that's also when we get more concerned, is that person going to be able to cope, which we'll go in, I don't want to steal your thunder, <laughs> uh, but we cope at some point and talk about it. Okay, great.